Aloha YouTube family. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the techniques I use to parse words. In my older parse videos, which some of them are over a year old, which I've actually taken down from this website, I just simply threw up some words and parse them on the spot, giving specific examples. Well, in this new playlist, I'm with the vision of creating more in-depth videos on how I do that and how you, the viewer, can do that. Because, of course, if you do your own legwork and put forth and invest your own effort into the learning, it's going to stick with you rather than me just telling you what this or that is. So... One technique I use where I start is I'll take a word and I'll look it up in, on uh, etymology.com online. And by the way, every website that I mention in this video, I will list in the description below the video. Now I'll go on to that website and I'll look up a word and start there. And I'll look for the earliest meanings, whether that's in Latin, French, Proto-Indo-European, everything. I look it up and I follow the oldest known examples. Now, nine times out of ten, these words will be broken up into syllables on Etymology Online. And then I will look up each syllable and follow that continuance of the evidence. So that I can gain closure on what they mean. And this may also necessitate me going to other websites and other dictionaries such as a Latin dictionary, a Greek dictionary, a Sanskrit dictionary. I like Webster's 1828 dictionary, sometimes Black's Law dictionary, all, all different sorts. So what the, the, the purpose is, is to cross-reference everything to gain closure for the finite mean of a word so that I know what it is. Now, I know people come forward and they say, well, this is where the closure comes from. Or you can't do that because this says it means that. That is completely um, not the angle that I perceive it from. The way that I look at it is I want closure for myself. And just because Webster's 1828 says that this word means such and such, doesn't mean that's what it means. That's not an authority. Authority comes from knowledge. Webster's 1828 is a repository of information. That's it. It's just one of many that I use to find a common base for each word particle so that I myself can craft my own finite mean in quantum grammar so that I have closure on the language that I use. And by the way, I do possess a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, dictionary of finite means. Therefore, I have control over all of the word terms that I use in my contracts. And it's a very powerful tool to have. And I encourage the viewers to do the same because if you have your own dictionary then you have a base with which to contract from and I've just I've just shared with you how one of the ways I create finite means in my dictionary in quantum grammar now a caveat to that and an interesting aside that I'd like to throw in as a personal observation I myself have never witnessed a person verbally speaking quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax grammar, off the top of their head. I've never seen it. I've seen people try, but it's not 100% correct. And the reason why I think this is, is because the programming of the fiction babble is so prevalent. I mean, how could it not be? Since kindergarten, we've been programmed with these things. And it's just the way it is. 
That's where you look at the volition of the thinking. What's the volition behind what the person is saying? Like, for example, my volition of this video is education. I want to share the tools and techniques I use to parse words and gain closure on the finite means. That's my volition, to help. And if you wait until the very end of this video, you will see my fate writ volition claim, which states my volition on paper in quantum grammar. Therefore, I have a base, a foundation with which to contract from so that if someone asks, what is your volition? There it is, right on paper. And that was crafted with the help of my dictionary and the finite means contained therein. So this is the first video. Uh, I'm also doing, as you noticed, a different style of video. It's more um, casual. I will be using this dry erase board, of course, uh, for more specific in uh, in-depth videos. But for this one, it's just an introduction. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you uh, for subscribing and liking my videos, you know, subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. And I look forward to providing more education in the future. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you, the viewer, are serious about learning quantum grammar, you are more than welcome to email me. And we can have a conversation. Thank you very much for watching.